Let's play Jane's Fighters Anthology. Today we'll be uh, showcasing a very special aircraft, and that is the AC-130 uh, Spectre. They've changed the call sign on this guy a couple of times. Um, forget what the newest ones are called. For some reason, Ghost Word pops into my sorry, Ghost Rider pops into mind, but I feel like that's not right. Um, so the AC-130 is a very unique aircraft in that um, it's basically a refitted C-130 Hercules and what they've done is they've put a bunch of guns into the side of it, namely various artillery and medium caliber auto cannons. And the point of the AC-130 is to basically provide fire support for friendly troops. So what we're going to do for this mission is we're going to set up we're going to assume the area has already been sanitized of SAMs and AAA from by Super Hornets, Fighting Falcons, Prowlers, and the like. Uh, we will be going after an armored column. Uh, no air opposition. And we can see as of when this game came out, we get a 25 mil, 40 mil, and a 105. So. With that, we're just going to jump right in, and I'll explain more in the mission. Alright, so... We can see, we can select between our different weapons. If we go outside, we can see the various guns sticking out of the aircraft. Uh, we see, looks like 220s, 240s. Actually... That looks like 420s, 240s, and a 105. Uh, but we do have contacts. And uh, the U.S. has experimented with gunship designs since Vietnam, uh, where they made the first gunship, which was um, uh, AC-47 Spooky. Right. And they all have those things like Spooky, Spectre, etc. Um, and that one was a very simple one. They just put a bunch of 50 caliber machine guns on the side of the plane. But it was successful when it did, expressing, you know, the Viet Cong and the North Vietnamese. So they went with another interim design where they put guns up to, I believe, 20 or 40 millimeter caliber on a slightly larger. Cargo plane, along with 50s, and experimented with that, and that too was a success, and they still wanted more, so they took the C-130, put a howitzer in it, and a couple of auto cannons, and that's what we got here. Five miles, 11 o'clock. Four miles, attack tank, Make sure contact, tank, you're 12 o'clock slow, three miles. Knows that he's supposed to be attacking the tanks. And this does make for a very difficult to achieve attack profile. As you can see how we gotta kind of fly sideways. To the target, so... And hopefully now we should be aligned. Oh yeah! Yeah! One mile, nine o'clock, in range. Yeah, you can hear the different sounds. We have the 20. That's the 105. That's the 20. We have the 40. Beautiful. You can see the hill's kind of getting in the way, but... Impact. Eventually that won't be the case. Impact. 
in this profile we're doing, this is how they all uh, do their attacks. It's just kind of, you know, having their wing tilted so they can fly around in circle after circle after circle. Got him! Alright. And, um, modern um, C 130s have it. Their armament's been changed a couple of times. Uh, nowadays, I believe they've dropped the 40 and they use, like, a pair of 20s and a 105. And they also have, uh, they also use, um, guided missiles, Hellfires, and the like on them now. And, uh, in a sense, the AC-130 is kind of merging with other designs, because the Marines have a new KC-130 tanker. Well, it's part tanker, part cargo aircraft, part ISR, and part attack aircraft. You know, it can refill aircraft, you can outfit it as a cargo plane that transport troops and supplies. It's got some various sensors on it, and you can put, you know, small missiles like Hellfires or uh, Griffins on it to attack enemy ground forces, so... In a sense, the AC-130 is becoming redundant, because lately the U.S. military has been trying to do everything with one design, which has its merits and its drawbacks, but um, the, I know the modern Special Forces AC-130s also have some of that ISR equipment they can, uh, they, um, their guns have changed a little bit. I guess they didn't think the 40s were effective. You know, like they would just use a 105 if they if it was too big for a 20. But uh, I do know these are also. Um, I believe the, the special forces ones are also capable of in-flight refueling to to extend their range. But I could be mistaken on that. And it's very likely that these will serve for a long time still. Because they, they wouldn't be great in a war against, say, Russia. At least not for most of the war. They're, as you can see, they're only really good if you have complete air superiority. You know, so you d this isn't a plane you want dodging SAMs or fighters. But for what America's been involved in lately with you know, killing terrorists and, and, uh, you know, all these other low capability militaries, it's perfect for that. You know, like during the Iraq war, you know, a couple of these guys, you know, I, you can see how much havoc we wreaked on just a small armored convoy, just I mean, one of us could have easily taken it down. You see how quickly two of us made sure work. So imagine, you know, during the, uh, oh, what's it called? The, the Highway of Death in the first Iraq War. You know, you have miles, miles, 100 miles of armored vehicles and, you know, trucks and whatnot all retreating from Kuwait. And imagine a couple of these guys up there just pounding away at the road. That's the that's the power of the AC-130. It's great for for any sort of asymmetrical warfare where you, you have complete and total air superiority. And it's not to say that you couldn't use this in a war against, say, Russia or China. It's just you wouldn't be able to use it for a good chunk of the opening stages of the war because you need complete air superiority. So it'd be great for mopping up, but you probably want A-10s on the offense initially. And it's surprisingly agile here in the pitch direction. Makes you kind of surprised. So. Welcome home. And there we are. We have landed. Another, this is another plane where it's not, certainly not maneuverable by any stretch of the imagination, but it's got very docile flight handling characters. It's very easy to learn, which is probably why, one of the reasons why these things are 
the C-130 itself is still in service after uh, almost 70 years now, I think. Jesus. But since Korea or a little after, for the most part. So that will end the mission. Alright, so we didn't sustain any damage. We Apparently our wingman took all our kills. That's a little surprising, but uh, it's certainly not what normally happens in here. But you can see we made short work of those armored vehicles. So that's a brief overview of the AC-130. Uh, definitely going to be around for many more years to come, especially with all the asymmetric conflicts the U.S. keeps finding itself in. So thank you all for watching. Next time we will going through the B-52, so stay tuned for that, and we'll see you next time.